So in this video we are going to take a look at settings and first let's go to blocks preferences. So these are the preferences for the app itself and there are some new cool stuff we didn't have before. For example, there is a new theme and this is how it looks. Okay, so let's go to preferences and see what else we can change. Of course, we can change the default browser and we have this block bar rows, brick bar rows. These are the floating block selector and floating brick selector I was talking about in the previous video. Uh, when we can, of course, manage our fonts here, we can install the fonts from Google. And of course, in Block3, we can use the local web fonts. And I think it was also available in later versions of Block2, but I'm excited to see it in Block3 for sure. And then we have a couple of other options which are not important right now so i will use everything as it is and next i will show you the project settings so let's click on this button here this looks familiar to blocks too but there are a couple of changes as before we can type the web address for our website but the new feature here is of course ability to change the home page so if we have the multiple pages we created now we can set which one becomes the index page and basically the landing page for a website. And now we can change the background of our site. So for now it is white. We can change the width and now we can change the default language for the whole website. So you can change whatever language you want. And here we can of course upload the favicon. And next let's go to the second tab and here we have the typography settings. And now in blocks 3 in addition to setting all of the settings like before, we can select any header, for example, and set the size and line height, and of course change the font to what we want. But the important thing is now we can adjust the breakpoints just from product settings like this. And all of the changes we do here will apply only to the breakpoint. So basically it is very important when it comes to creating the responsive typeface on our website. Next, buttons, and this is default style for buttons. Well, I will leave it as it is. Here we can change or disable the preloader. In the next step we can add the Google Analytics code. And here we can attach the project attachments. And finally there are some other options. For example, we can change the default logo. And finally, for this video, I will show you the project settings and basically they are the same as in Blocks 2. Here we can change the page name and page name will actually be used for the URL. So make sure that you put something you want to appear in URL here. And of course, we have this search engine optimization settings here. We can set the SEO title, the title for your Google search results and for the title in the browser here we can set the seo keyword some people say they are not as important as before but you can set them here if you want and a very important thing of course here we can put the description for our website and here we can explore some other options so here we have the use in primary menu so when we create the page it is by default goes to the navigation so if we uncheck this the page will not be appearing in navigation by default. Other important things here are ability to enable and disable the top and global areas. And well, to show you what it is, I will add new block right away. And from here you can see if we uncheck the top global area, it will go away. And if we uncheck the bottom global area, it will go away. Okay, so here we can also add some code. And we can, of course, set the language for the page. But as I showed you in project settings, you can just set the language in project settings and don't do it individually for every page. Uh, we can also switch the file type from HTML to PHP, but I never did that. I just use HTML. I think it's better. And we can attach some files to header here as well. So this is it for settings. And in the next video, we will start to work on our new responsive website.